nigh or near unto all them that call upon him and to all that call upon him in truth. So he's near to those who call upon him in truth. And I wonder what that word truth means. Does that mean not telling a lie? It has nothing to do with that kind of truth. In sincerity. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. And someone turned that around and said the fervent prayer of a righteous person brings great results. And I think that's what I'm trying to show you in this series on prayer. God's people have gotten lax about prayer, myself included, or God would never have told me this. We've gotten lax in prayer, and prayer is something that we do at certain times in the service. And um, then we do it at certain times in the day. I pray before I go to bed, or I pray the first thing in the morning, or we pray over our meal sometimes, or you know, we just we got into habits. And there's no truth, not being a lie, but sincerity, there's no truth coming forth in our prayers. And God showed me that very point in my own life. And we have to change it. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person. So there's a lot more to prayer than what we have learned here recently. And I'm going to show you that again tonight and pray. It's my prayer that you get it. Father, I thank you for <clears throat> this time. I thank you for this congregation. Everyone's here that's supposed to be here. And I pray, God, for your anointing to fall upon them. Let them have ears to hear. And let them hear what thus saith the Lord and accept it, Lord, even though they don't understand it. Accept it and then works where they can't understand it. And we just pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And Jesus says we have not because we ask not. So there are times in our lives that we don't bother to pray. I can handle it. I don't need to pray. I can do it. Other times he said we pray we have not because we ask the wrong way. And that is, a, that is a scripture that we do need to try to understand. How can you ask the wrong way? Literally, how can you do it? And you ask the wrong way whenever you ask not believing. But we say we do believe when we pray. But I wondered just how much, how strong our belief is in what we're asking of God. And I'm going to use the examples tonight, and I pray that you'll listen to them and let it, let it speak to you. I talked to you last week about several instances where Jesus went to individuals that were dead and prayed for them. They, they rose, just came forth. No problem. Because Jesus knew whenever he said something, it was going to happen. But I've always been intrigued by one verse in the Bible where it said Jesus went to a blind man and he prayed for the blind man. And he said when he got through praying, he asked the blind man, how do you see? He said, well... I see light, but men, they look like sticks. So Jesus prayed for him again. And the second time, all the scales were moved off his eyes. He saw perfectly. I've always wondered, why in the world would Jesus do that? Why didn't he do it the first time? He had the same faith he'd always had. That's the only instance that's recorded of him doing that. And I think one of the reasons is to teach me and you that sometimes we pray and we don't get what we want and we should pray again. We're, we're so quick to come up and offer a prayer for something and then go back to our seats. And we really haven't prayed in earnest, in sincerity, and in truth. And God says you can get, maybe you can get results, but they won't be what you need or what I have for you. So you need to pray again. And there's nothing wrong with praying again. See, we would think, well, if I do it again, they're going to think I didn't have faith the first time. It doesn't matter what they think. What matters is whether or not we get from God what he has waiting on us. And I encourage you to pray and pray hard. I thanked Ernie this morning when he went out for praying for me this morning. He said, well, Danny, he said, I want you to know I almost didn't do it. He said, the devil told me not to. And he said, I started not to pray. He said, but then all of a sudden I stood and I began to pray in God's name. The moment Ernie began to pray, my throat began to loosen up. Call it anything you want to. I call it God. But I thank him for obeying God. And that's what God wants for this church. 
We cannot be a ritualistic church where we come in and we follow things and we do just exactly what's written on a piece of paper somewhere. We don't have that piece of paper, and if we did, I'd throw it away. But we can't do that. God wants to move in our midst. God works different ways in our lives, in our services. He doesn't, he doesn't always work the same way. Because if he did, we would think we were the reason that things were working right. God likes to stir things up. He likes to change things. And in your own prayer life, I would encourage you to begin to pray. Not, well, I pray every moment I get up. But what about the rest of the day? Well, I pray before I go to bed. Well, what have you done that day? God says we should be in a, in a, in a spirit of prayer all day long. It doesn't mean that you go around with your eyes closed praying everywhere you are. But it means in your mind you're praying. God brings something to your mind. And right there you pray in your mind for that very thing or whatever it is. And if you can't stop and pray out loud or whatever that moment you just pray in your mind. But you're in a constant state of prayer. What is it God is wanting to communicate to you at that moment? If I were to ask you, every one of you in here would tell me you want to be used by God. Amen? Amen. You really do. Being used by God has nothing to do with age. Being used by God is someone who is making themselves available to God for him to use. And I believe that one of the way God, ways that God wants to use his people in these latter days is for us to pray the effectual, fervent prayer for others around us. We get so wrapped up in us and what's wrong with us that we forget about the other person. And we want everybody to pray for us and do something special for us when there's someone else worse off than we are. I told you this morning, when I, I get to thinking about how bad I might be hurting, and when I close my eyes and begin to pray, I see Maria. And I quit praying. I say, God bless Maria. I'm not suffering just about as bad as she is. There's always somebody around us that's worse off. And God wants us to pray for ourselves. He certainly does. But he also wants us to use that desire to have prayer for us to turn it around and have a desire to pray for other people. I appreciate what you did, Bill. It's to be something that we do all the time. We just listen, God, what do you want me to do? And whenever God speaks to you and he realizes you have courage enough to do what he says, he's going to use you more and more and more. And I believe he's going to do that to us in the spirit of prayer. So let's go into that now for a moment. <clears throat> I showed you how Jesus prayed over and over and some of the great miracles in his life. Then Jesus said at the end of his ministry, he said, the things, he said, the things that you have seen me do, you shall do also. He didn't say can, you shall do also, and even greater things than these shall you do. Now, how many of you in here would like to have a healing ministry in your life? I guarantee you I would. And I tell you, I would love, to God, I would love for God to use me in such a way that I could pray the prayer of faith and people be delivered. I would assume that's what you'd like to. And I pray that. And I say, God, if this is part of be part of my ministry, I want it. But I have to remember that I have to be able to know how to pray if I'm going to do that. Anybody can pray. And we have people that come up here and they have needs. We'll gather around them. And I, I sometimes wonder. We gather around them and that's, that's love and that's support and I appreciate all that. But I wonder how everybody's praying. I would love to have a microphone to record each prayer that's made around the altar. I'm not the judge of that. God is. But I wonder what prayers are being made. And then there are some of us that won't come pray with people. And that, that's also bothered me at times too. Why wouldn't we want to pray for people? Well, I just, I can't do it, bless God. Why? You can't do it because you don't want to. You can do anything through God. He said that. I can do all things through God. But some of us have prayers of deliverance in us that we are refusing to let come forth because the devil convinces us that that's the pastor's job. Oh, Jimmy will get that covered. Oh, there'll be some more. Oh, there's too many. I couldn't get it where I had to. See, we use the lies of the devil. This is the church that God is going to create. And he's going to create it in the near future. I know that. A church where God wants us to be concerned and to care about every person in this building. He wants us to be able to go from away from here on, on a Sunday night. And Monday at 11 o'clock, he brings somebody to our mind. And we begin to pray for them. Don't know where they are. Don't know what they're going through. But God, in the name of Jesus, touch them. Because God would never bring anybody to your mind that he didn't want you to pray about. 
Now, I will tell you, if you're saved tonight, and Jesus Christ is your Lord or Savior, I don't care about how, how deep your relationship is. If you're saved and Christ is your Savior, you have the ability to pray for somebody else. And God expects you to do it. Don't ever let the devil lie to you. Well, I, I just don't know if I'm worthy. Then you need to stop right then and have a prayer and ask God to forgive you for your sins and set you free right then. Because any child of God is worthy. If God's in your life, you're worthy. So don't tell me you're not worthy. I, I just, I, no, you're, you're, if you're saved, you're worthy, and God wants you to do it. And if you feel that way, then stop and pray about it. Check your own spirit and then go from there. Now, Jesus went around doing these things, and then we began to look at the ministry of Paul. Well, I want to tell you, one day, Jesus was out ministering with his disciples, and, and uh, <clears throat> things were getting hot, they were getting tired, they were getting hungry. So Peter invited them to his house to eat. And in doing that, Peter didn't ask his wife about it. So when they got to the house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick. She was burning up with a fever. Peter walked in and Peter saw it. And I think he was probably over in the corner trying to explain to his wife why he brought all these guys home with him. And Jesus, when he walked in, he saw a need. And he walked over and began to pray, and instantly her fever was gone. And she got up off of that bed and got up and started preparing food. Now, I think that's a good picture of me and you. We walk into situations where God places us, but we begin to look at the human aspect of what's going on. We don't see the spiritual. And we walk in and there's a, there's a need, but we don't see it because we're looking at something over here that deals with the physical, not the spiritual. But Jesus walked in and he looked and he, he didn't bother about these physical things. He didn't bother about a, you know, offering a, an excuse or an apology for coming. He saw a need and he went directly to that need. And he reached down and prayed and touched her and she got up and began to cook. I think that's the life that we're living today. I think we get too carried away with what's going on in our lives. I think we have meetings to go to, and we go to those meetings, and they're important. You need to get to your seat and read your paperwork and see if you can say something good. And somebody sitting right there near us is in dire need. We don't see it. And we say, well, I can't pray out loud in those meetings. That's, nobody said you had to. But in your spirit, you can be praying for that person. We need to begin to look for needs all around us. I never will forget years ago, <clears throat> in fact, I was still going to Monona Park then, out here at the air base they, uh, where they had the uh, horse shows, the rodeos and stuff, they had a, a girl get thrown off the horse during one of the events, and she was hurt pretty bad. And people ran to her and gathered around her, and they called the ambulance, and they called this, and they began to do this, and they began to do this, and they began to do this, which is what you should do. Another lady walked up, and she saw that, and she got down on her knees, and she put her hands on her and began to pray for her. She didn't know that woman, had no clue who she was, but she began to pray for that person, for God's healing to come to the body. See, that's what I'm talking about. God has anointed us to carry on his job that he, he performed here, and we're to be an extension of God. We should never, ever be afraid to pray. And I'm telling you, there's some of you in this building right here that will not pray out loud, will not do it. And I, I, just, I just feel sorry for you because you're allowing the devil to do something to you that God doesn't want done. You're afraid that you can't say the right prayer. You're, you're afraid you're not supposed to. Whatever the reason is, you just don't do it. And, and that's not good. I'm not getting on to you. That's between you and God, but it's not good. Because we all need to be willing to let God work through us as Christians. And we've got to be able to pray if God wants us to pray and not be ashamed. We've got to be able to stand up and confess and speak things and not be ashamed. That doesn't come with, <coughs> that doesn't come with maturity <coughs> as a Christian. It comes whenever God's people are willing to let God work through them. I've, I've been in places just like you have been. There are times in my life that I've been afraid and ashamed to do what God wanted me to do. And I feel sorry about it today because I missed some opportunities in my life. But we've got to learn. We have, we have Sunday school and everything else down here for our kids to try to teach them how to talk in public. 
how to pray. And our kids are some of the best praying people in this, in this church. And I don't understand what happened between kids and adulthood, but something happens in there and the kids don't want to pray anymore. I don't quite understand that, and then again I do. But, but our kids can pray. They can pray, and I thank God for that. So Jesus walked in and prayed. Do you understand no disciple cared enough about her to pray for her? Not a one of them. They were hungry. They were getting their place around the table. They were making sure they had a seat somewhere. Some of them were probably drinking water because they were thirsty. And there was a need lying there that nobody ministered to except Jesus. Wouldn't that be a shame for us to get to heaven and God said, Daniel, listen, I put so many people in your lives for you to pray for and you just didn't do it. You didn't do it. Now we go fast forward and we watch it, look at Paul and we see how Paul was a great minister of the gospel. And Paul was a sinner among all sinners. He was chief. He said that. He had done some horrible things in his life. But when God got a hold of him, he changed him. And he, Paul began to preach the gospel and teach the gospel. And he did it with reckless abandon. He just, he just, he just went forth. He was going to do what God wanted. Nobody could stop him. Had a lot of interference from people that were afraid of Paul because of his past life. They thought it was a trick and Paul was going to kill him. But Paul didn't care. He just kept going. He never stayed in place. He just kept going, 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 going. The Bible tells a story one time of Paul. He was in a building somewhere, a, a tall building, three or four stories. And he was preaching. And it was late at night. And the, and the Bible said that Paul had been preaching a long time. So you can lay it on Paul. But it's night time. Paul's been preaching. And there's a boy sitting in the back in a window. The window was raised up. He was sitting in the windowsill. And he had sat there and he had been listening for a long time. And sleep got a hold of him. And the next thing you know, his name was Eutychus. Eutychus fell out and fell down several stories, hit the ground, and it killed him. Now, Paul is preaching his heart out to these people. And they immediately begin to run down. And the, undoubtedly, all of them, we'll just say the majority of them, ran down to see what was wrong with the boy. Some wanted to see how gory it was. Was there brains everywhere? You know, I, want, I like to see this kind of stuff. And I want to see, is he, is he really messed up? Others had run to see, is he going to be okay? Maybe his parents were there. Maybe they weren't. I don't know. But everybody ran down and began to look. And nobody in that group, according to the Bible, did any one thing to pray for this boy. We go to wrecks and we go to different things. And, and really, some of us want to see how gory it is because we like these gory things. Nobody had offered a prayer for that boy. He was dead. Some said there, perhaps there's no use. He's already dead. Nothing we can do. Paul comes down. Maybe somebody says, Paul's here. He'll do something. Everybody stood around. The Bible says that Paul walked over to Eutychus and laid his body on top of Eutychus's body. And we just assumed Eutychus was laying face up. Paul laid right down on top of his body and prayed. It's not recorded what Paul prayed, but I know Paul was praying in his spirit. And when he said uh, immediately, when Paul got up, that boy got up and they walked back up to the building. One person, one person. Where were all the others? Where were their minds? And that is what I'm trying to teach you here. Every one of us have to learn how to pray. And when there are needs that's up here, as Bill was saying a while ago, if you don't believe, don't pray. Pray for yourself. Don't, don't pray. I remember, and I told you this one time before, years ago, I was watching a um, TV program. Oh, you, who, who wants to be a millionaire? And they were playing that program. And a guy was there, and he got to one where he was stumped on, and he had this, I asked the audience. He had that, that left, whatever you call that. So he said, I want to ask the audience. And the guy that was saying, it's okay, ask him. So he turns around to the audience. He says, audience, I need you to help me with this question. And he said this, if you don't know the answer to this question, don't vote. Don't punch one, two, or three. Don't do it if you don't know the answer. But if you know the answer, punch it in. Now, I didn't know they'd let him do that, but he did it. 
So his idea was, if you don't know, don't vote. If you do know, vote. And I'll know, I'll know what, how to go. Do you know, he said, audience, punch in your votes. They punched them in. And do you know that he got 50 and 50? 50 voted for two, 50 voted for three. If you don't know, don't vote. And then the vote was half and half. And I've always thought about that. Because sometimes that's how we are in our Christian life. We know. We can tell you. We can say. But we get in trouble with it. So Paul prayed and there was one raised from the dead. What power do you and I have in our lives? What does God want me and you to do? This is a little old country church. We all know each other. We all talk funny. But the power of God could be used in this place to ignite the power of God in Waycross, Georgia, to go out from here to all around the whole state of Georgia and to the world. It can happen. It can happen. God wants to do things for us, but we don't let him. Now, when you start to pray, the main thing that God taught me, one, we need to start praying and not be afraid, but number two is when you pray, God says, you have things, you don't have things because you don't ask me. We don't pray. That's, what, that's that point. Other is you ask me the wrong way. How do you ask God the wrong way? Is there certain words that you have to say to God to make a prayer right? We know that's not true. So how do you ask the wrong way? What sort of things that is I, when you pray, believe, and you shall have it. That's God's words. But he says you don't get a lot of things because you ask the wrong way. Well, God told me the wrong way that we ask is we ask for something, but we don't allow God's will to be done in our prayer. We pray a one-sided prayer. We jump on that thing, what sort of things you desire when you pray, believe, and you should have them. God said in his word, if I pray, if I pray and I believe, I'm going to get it. So I'm praying for this. And you begin to pray for a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You begin to pray. <coughs> you begin to pray for um, money for a debt or a bill that you have. You, be, you begin to pray for, you know, just and then we, we pray for all kinds of things. But he says, the reason you don't get a lot of the answers is because you're praying the wrong way. And you say, okay, well, teach me the right way. And the right way in any prayer that you pray is to pray for what you want and ask God directly for that prayer. And when you get through praying, you say, God, more than anything else, I want your will to be done. See, we forget that part because we do not want God's will done. We want what we want. That's what he said. Ask whatever you want. If you just believe, I'll give it to you. So we use that as a license to pray for anything, knowing we're going to get it and believe we're going to get it. And then when we don't get it, we get mad. Jesus said in the garden, I told you last week, he said, Father, I don't want to go to face that at Calvary. And Father, if there's another way for this to happen without me going there, Father, if there's some other way that I won't have to drink this cup, please show it to me. Now, he's praying for what he wanted. What sort of things you desire when you pray, believe it. He did not want to have to go there. He was a human being. He did not want to have to go there and suffer that. He did not want to have to drink that cup where his father would actually turn away from him for a few moments. He didn't want any of that. So whatever he you want, pray. When you pray, believe. So he prayed, God, I don't want it to happen. You and I stop our prayers there. And that is why so many of our prayers don't get answered because we stop right there. That's our prayer. But you receive not because you ask the wrong way. How can you ask God the wrong way for anything? You ask God the wrong way when you pray for what you want, and that's it. But Jesus gave us the model prayer. Father, I don't want this. And if, if, there's any, <clears throat> if, there's, if there's any other way, God, let it happen. And then he stopped. And the Spirit of God came upon him. He said, but God, not my will but thine be done. God, this is what I want. I've prayed for what I want, but my will is not number one. Your will is. My will is number two. So whatever your will is for my life and for this prayer, God, thy will be done. But we ask wrong because we ask for what we want, claiming what's everything you desire when you pray, believe, and you have them. That's what the Bible says, and I pray, and he doesn't do it. I don't know where God hears my prayers or not. I think I quit praying. But we haven't prayed... <coughs> We haven't prayed the right way. Now, I want to do this very quickly. And if you'll listen to me very quickly, 
I'll end this. The choir doesn't have to sing their song. You're going to get another handout tonight. Becky already has them printed. This handout is going to have what I'm going to read to you. I want to try to help you understand things. It begins by saying good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. Do you know why Jimmy brought up that thing a while ago about him having to do the cooking and shopping and, and the cleaning and all that kind of stuff? It makes him appreciate Joyce a whole lot more. That's what he was saying. But do you understand also whenever we go through these things where bad things happen to good people, you know why? So we can appreciate the good things. So that we can think there's a heaven coming and one day this, there ain't going to be no devil in heaven. One day I'm going to have a good life and a perfect life and I'm going to live through this because there's a better day headed here for me. It makes us appreciate those things up there. If we had it all good here, we wouldn't even need God. That's exactly right. But God lets us go through these things because he loves us and he cares for us. And every bad thing we go through, God sees it. He's there. He knows it. He feels it. And he's going through it with us. Amen. God is always with us. And he will provide for us as we boldly go forth in his power. Not go forth. Just say a few words. That's my prayer. Get up and go. As we go forth in his power. Here's the catch. Now think about it. You have not because you asked amiss. You asked the wrong way. Jesus finished that prayer. And I've got to teach you how to finish your prayers. I've got some examples here. And I'm going to read these out to you. I spit all over it. <clears throat> I got to read it. I know. I got a. <clears throat> I got a good copy right here. <clears throat> I want you just to listen to this and please understand it. Please. The very first one is you cannot pray to win unless you're willing to lose. I told you last week I'm trying to get my boys to go in there before they get to bat, pray, and just ask God help me to get a hit. And they do that. But now they've got to also understand in that prayer, they've got to be willing to strike out if they're going to do what God wants because God's going to do what brings him the most glory. And that one of you may strike out or you may pop up. You may, but the thing is, if you start, <laughs> then what you said is, God, I don't want your will done in my life. I'm in charge of me. But when you strike out or when you mess up, you think about it for a moment. I asked God to get a hit. For some reason, he didn't want me to have it. It's okay, I'll get it next time. And you run back to that as a good example for other people to see. We've got to learn to fail like that. And if you're not willing to do it, don't pray and ask God that to get you a hit, boys. Don't pray and ask God to let you win if you're not willing to lose. Because if his will for you to lose, you've got to be willing to do it. That will continue the prayer. That's what we miss there. The second one is you can't pray for riches unless you're willing to be poor. And when you pray for God to meet some kind of need in your life financially, you got to end that prayer saying, God, thy will be done. And if you've got a better way for it, I'm for it. And his better way may be for you to lose everything you have and stand up and be the Christian in all of it. It's easy for us to praise God when everything's going good. God wants to see us praise him when things don't work out like we want. You can't pray for advancement on your job unless you're willing to be passed over. See, we, God, I need this job. You know I do. I'm the best qualified person here, God, blah, 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 blah. And then we get passed over. And boy, we get so mad. It's because we haven't learned to pray that prayer. God, whatever your will is in this job. And next thing you know, we get fired. We don't even have a job. You're supposed to stand tall and say, God, I, I did not expect this. It wasn't what I prayed for. But I'm going to trust you through this too. I'm going to walk like a man. Because God, I love you. So you got to finish your prayer, church. You, you can't pray for rain unless you're willing to experience a drought. You can't pray for plenty unwilling, unless you're willing to have less. Less. I was talking this morning to Dale. I asked him, did everything turn out good with his crops? He said, it sure did. I had a good year. Last year, you had a horrible year, terrible. This year, you had a good year. We don't ever know what the year's going to bring. He said, but God's in control. Whatever he wants to do is fine with me. And I said, man, that's going to go good today with my service. See, that's how we should live. Here's what I want, God. I want a good, bundleful clop, you know, and all that. 
but dried up. There's nothing there. And God said, can you be my man when you have nothing? Or does it take you having everything to be my man? I want God to be able to trust me over here. Just as well as he trusts me over here. And that's what we have to do. You can't pray for success unless you're willing to fail. God, I've given every one of our deacons chances to come up here and speak on Wednesday nights. And the devil tells them not to. They don't, they, they're not preachers. They ain't called to preach. But we are called to share the word of God. And I think as deacons they should. But sometimes the devil gets to work on every one of them. And they get so scared. And they forget to say that prayer. God help me to do good tonight. But not thy will, thy be done. God can take, make more out of a failure than he can of success. If you're willing to trust him. I failed. I messed up. No, you didn't. God has a plan for you. Somebody gets up here and is going to sing a song. And they're praying, God, please help me do good. And then they miss a note right in the middle of it. They want to cry their eyes out. Why? Because they're embarrassed. They're messed up. No. God never makes a mistake. God wants us to know we can live with failure. Because we're going to face failure in our lives. God, you can't pray for acceptance unless you're willing to feel rejection. And you better know that one. Help me to be one of them. And God looks at that situation and says, I don't want you to be one of them. Mm -mm. You're better than that. You have to know it. You can't pray for good unless you're willing to accept bad. None of us going around praying for bad things. We pray for good things. But you must be willing to accept bad. You can't pray for first unless you're willing to be second. And we get our kids and we go in a beauty pageant and these girls are pretty, you know, they do all that thing and spend all that money and everything and they, they don't come in first. And then I hear things like, it was the judge's fault. That thing was rigged. It was worse. It was this... And what are you teaching your children? That God doesn't rule in your life. God doesn't want us all to win. We can't all be the most beautiful. We can all be beautiful in his sight. And that's what he wants us to do. Failure is a part of life. We need to teach our kids how to fail. We don't do that. We teach them how to succeed. If you don't succeed, then we get all over them. No, they need to learn that. You can't pray to, <coughs> to have sight unless you're willing to be blind. Think about that. I'm always complaining about these glasses. You can't pray for sight unless you're willing to be blind. You can't pray for hearing unless you're willing to be deaf. Now, I know none of you have ever prayed that prayer in here. Let me show you something different. We pray, but we don't pray effectual prayers. Because we stop with what we want. You can't pray for happiness unless you're willing to receive sadness. We always want, we always want a good report. But there are times that God wants us to stand up in a bad report so somebody can see how we do it. You can't pray for peace unless you're willing to face a storm. Face a storm. We pray the storms go away, don't we? And then when it doesn't, we want to get mad. Messed up my day. Ruin this. What about God's hand in it? If we really would pray, God, thy will be done, then we're going to sit back and whatever God brings in our life, we're going to rejoice because it's God. Whether it's what we want or not. You can't pray for love unless you're willing to be hated. God, let them all love me. Oh, God, please let them all get along with me. Let them show me love, God. And then one of them gets up and calls us all kinds of names and says things about us. Maybe punches us in the face. And what do we do? We run back and tell everybody what a sorry bunch of people they were. And Jesus said, turn the other cheek. He didn't mean for us to stand there and just keep letting them beat us. But we need to be willing to and let God handle it. There's so many bad situations in this world today. And God needs Christian people willing to stand up in these bad situations and be a Christian I'll tell you what I'll do. Really? Really? 
You can't pray for understanding unless you're willing to be confused. And you can't pray for calm seas unless, unless you're willing to face violent storms. See, church, these things, we're not going to pray for these bad things. That would be foolish. But what we are going to pray for is for God to help us in the situation that we are in. And whatever happens in that situation at the end, we got to believe it's God's will. I, I didn't have to go through neck surgery. God could have healed it. Why didn't he? I don't know. But if I ask God to heal me, that will be done because I trust him. No one's got to pray the same thing. It's the, it's the same for every one of us. God help my marriage and marriage goes bad. God help my marriage, thy will be done. Now we've got this thing covered either way. We've got to be bold and stand up and pray and believe. We don't finish our prayers and that's why we don't get what we pray for sometimes. Because God brings it in a different form but we don't see it. See, if I pray for healing and that's it and I don't get it, I'm disappointed. I didn't get it. But if I pray for healing and I say, God, whatever your will is because I trust you enough with my life, thy will be done. If I don't get the healing and I, I get what, the, what God brought, then I'm happy because I got what I wanted. Because what did I want? Thy will be done. And we want more, we pray more about those things that we want than what God wants for our lives. And we need to finish our prayers, church. Thy will be done. And you could, these are just, I use what, 16 things here tonight, and I gave you four last week. You can have numerous things like that. Whatever you pray for, be willing to take the other end. And then, love God. That's why the church is failing today. Because we're not getting our prayers through. And the reason we're not getting our prayers through is because we're praying our prayers and we're refusing to let God have a part of it by saying, Thy will be done. God, I'll take whatever you send me. This is what I want. I'll take whatever you send me. We humble ourselves before the Lord. That's what prayer is all about. It's communication. And we have to learn how to pray for God to bless your family and bless this church and bless this town. Some of us have got to get together and pray and believe what we're praying in. Saturday night prayer is a wonderful place to do that. But some of you aren't even convinced yet that's important in your life. And that's okay. God will deal with that. But I'm saying we need to get together and pray as this church. Pray for this church. Pray for one another that we all get stronger. Father, I thank you tonight for your love and mercy. God, I know what you're trying to tell me, and I'm trying to share with the church as hard as I can. I'm trying to make it easy for them to understand, God. Please, let us ponder on these things. I come against Satan in the way that he's trying to bind up our minds. This didn't even make sense to some people, God, but if they'll pray, you'll give it to them. You said, those of you who like wisdom, let him ask of me, and I will give it to him freely. God, help me to understand what the pastor is saying. Let me finish my prayers by saying, thy will be done, because that's the only time a prayer can be complete. We've got to quit praying half prayers and be so selfish. So God, bless this church. And help it to receive everything of you. Take us home and keep us safe and bring us back, and we just remind you we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. The sheets will be back there for you. They're already printed up. You know, Dawson Brody's got some right there. Get your sheet and take it home and study it. Jackson's got some over there.